It is so wonderful to be with you. I was talking to Pramita a few minutes back, and I said that I am eagerly waiting for this moment, and I want to join this divine event with you all. Shyam and Satkarma Parivar had a wonderful journey of three years under hard work and very genuine and very sincere commitment of my very own Dhruv. Dhruv, first of all, may God bless you, Beta. I love you for this wonderful journey and your commitment for this. And I also want to congratulate your family, your parents, your brother, your sister, and everyone, Beta. In these three years, the nine teachers that have come up and those who have started studying Gita, all of our teachers, Dhruv, Mayank, Meera, Sonal, Chandni, Hasu, Veena, Avnita and Roshni. I also want to specifically thank the firm, CMS Cameron McKenna, because they have supported us all throughout this journey of three years. Dear brothers and sisters, I just want to share one thing. Gita is not just a book of Hinduism. Gita is a book of spirituality, which preaches humanity. It just it preaches one thing. I was thinking about it today, that spirituality is basically a journey from compulsiveness to consciousness. And Gita leads us in this beautiful journey. It teaches us not to operate by default, but by design. It teaches us that modern industrial evolution and technology reduces us to a mere machine, while Gita evolves us at a, as a man, and not as a man, but it evolves divine qualities in us. That is the most beautiful thing of Bhagavad Gita. And you have traveled this spiritual journey of three years through Bhagavad Gita. Gita tells us there is only one race and that is human race. There is only one language and that of the heart. There is only one law, the law of karma. And there is only one religion, religion of love, brotherhood and the principle it teaches love and let live. Gita is a yoga shastra. After every chapter we say Srimad Bhagavad Gita so yoga shastra Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvade and Bhagavad Gita gives very beautiful two definitions of yoga in the second chapter. Yoga ha karma su kaushalam yoga is excellence in action which is required in modern life. And another is Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. People are talking about peace today. But Bhagavad Gita tells us that peace is basically a very preliminary thing. It is an external thing. What Gita calls yoga is Samatvam, equanimity. Equanimity is a lasting experience. It's a wonderful transformation one achieves. And what we need in the world today is equanimity. Without equanimity, we face all the problems that the modern society has. The chief among, being them, among them is stress. I was talking to a youth seminar in my uh, US journey, La Dharma Yatra, last week. I said, all the successful people are stressed today. All the seminars that I take, maybe a successful professional, maybe a successful lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, a successful businessman, they're all stressed. Why? They say we have to struggle a lot. We have to struggle to get to a point and we have to struggle to be there. And hence they are stressed. This sends a very negative message to our younger generation. And see, all the children of successful people, they don't match the level of their parents, especially the father or whatever the successful parent is. These youngsters feel that if success amounts to struggle, we don't mind. 
But if success amounts to stress, who cares? We don't want it. And that is why modern generation falls prey. They are very vulnerable to near future temptations. Dear brothers and sisters, Bhagavad Gita is such a wonderful lighthouse which says that success does not necessarily mean to be stressful. Struggle plus spirituality is success plus equanimity. There is no stress left. And this is what Bhagavad Gita teaches us. I am sure in this wonderful journey of three years, you all have imbibed these values of Bhagavad Gita, which are so very essential in the modern life. I pray to Sri Krishna to bless you with health, wealth and strength. May you all keep doing Satkarma. One journey is over. We want to continue our journey of spirituality, maybe with some other scriptures, maybe with Srimad Bhagavat, maybe Ramayana, maybe Upanishads, maybe Hanuman Chalisa. Dhruv, what do you suggest? Hanuman Chalisa no? book launch no? next Wednesday, which is our 200th event. So. Wonderful, wonderful. And I know this is a wonderful and a very touchy event. I was talking to Dhruv this afternoon that I have celebrated such moments at least six to seven times world over. And how does it feel when you come to the 18th chapter, the pinnacle of Bhagavad Gita? In July, we celebrated such event in New York. It was a journey of 20 years. I was doing one chapter every year. And all the people, at least 750 to 800 people in the uh, auditorium, they were all so emotional. They were all, they were, I mean, I could see tears in everybody's eyes and of course in my eyes too. This is a very emotional moment for all of us, but I pray to God, I pray to Sri Krishna to shower his choicest blessings of all of us. I pray and bless everyone present here, all the honorary and honorable members of parliament. Mr. Donald Popert, if he's there, I can't see him in the audience right now, but if he's there, all the very gardener, uh, and uh, our own, uh, all the political leaders, social leaders, may Krishna bless you all. Thank you so much for being a part of this wonderful journey with Shyam and Dhruv. Love you, Beta, for this wonderful gift to me. Thank you, Guruji. Jai Krishna. Love you loads. And I, I want you to um, stay at Jai Jaban Putra. I want to recognize this man. There's only one person that has come right from the first talk and has supported me throughout this whole journey. And we've had this special relationship. When I sit in this Gita class, I play Krishna, he plays Arjun. And I spiritual delusions. When we go and sit at a dinner table at Hakkasan, he becomes Krishna and I become Arjun. And the amount of support, love he has given me is unbelievable. We, you would never find a person in the second generation Hindu and a third generation Hindu sitting down for together for dinner as friends. It's just people don't even get along with their parents. But me and him have formed such a deep bond and friendship. And not just me, every single person in our youngster Sham groups invites him to our social events and regards him as such a father figure. He has been there for me. Throughout this journey, we've achieved a lot of success. When success comes, a lot of vultures come into your life through jealousy, which are the Hindu community leaders. And we've been targeted by them, yet he's been there to support me right from that moment. He's persuaded me not to move abroad when I got a job offer in Singapore. He's the reason why I'm in the UK today. And I just want to give him a hug right now because he's such a special person in my life. Everybody, um, thank you for coming and taking the uh, the time today, and uh, hopefully um, you've enjoyed.